Good morning, Quad Copter 101 here. Before we get started, let's get the shout outs out of the way. Today's shout outs goes to All Random 101 and Gihan Gashnuka. Both of those were the first to say first in one of my recent videos and thus win a, wins a shout out. So, what do I have for you today? This particular drone is one of my most requested drones to date. I don't, you know, it's got a lot of interest. Uh, I'm not sure why, but it does. <laughs> it is the MJX Bugs 5W. Uh, Bugs 5W is a GPS drone. Uh, with follow me, circle me, and waypoints capability. Along with that, it has a 1080p camera with an up-down swivel lens. It transmits uh, video via Wi-Fi, uh, 5G Wi-Fi, i got to mention that, to your phone. It also has a, a micro SD card slot for inserting your own uh, uh, SD card camera in your memory camera so that you can avoid any Wi-Fi lag or uh, stuttering that you normally see with Wi-Fi video. Let's go over a little bit closer looking at the drone. Um, it uses the same motors as the MJX Bugs 3. That's the uh, MTS, uh, hold on, got it written down here, 1806-1500kV motors. Um, also, it uses a proprietary 7.4-volt, uh, 1800mAh uh, battery. You know, previously you could use... Uh, you could find uh, uh, the batteries were interchangeable with the Bugs series, like between the Bugs 2W and the Bugs 3. This one is not. This one is proprietary with a proprietary connector in the front. So, you know, you won't be able to swap batteries with uh, the 2W, the Bugs 2 and the um, uh, Bugs 3 with this particular drone. But uh, let's go over again. Uh, I mentioned this has 1080p camera. Uh, 5 point, or not 5.8 gigahertz, 5G Wi-Fi, which means 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. Now, not all phones are capable of 802.11 AC. So, very, you know, newer phones, some of the newer phones are, but not the older phones don't have that. So you better check before you consider purchasing this that your phone is indeed capable of operating on 802.11 AC. If it is not, you will not be able to use this drone. I would not recommend this drone for you. Okay. Um, let's go over the controller. This is its controller. It supposedly has uh, 300 meters of range on it. Uh, the controls on it, this particular button here, if you're binding the quadcopter for the first time, this red button, you hold it down and turn the on-off switch to put this in bind mode, then plug in the battery of the drone, and it should bind to it. Uh, Follow-on flights, all you need to do is turn it on, and it should automatically bind to the drone. You only need to do that once. That is, if it doesn't bind when you get it from the factory. Um, once you get it bound and you have sufficient satellites to take off, you just uh, press and hold this un unlock key and the motors will start spinning. And then you can either do an automatic takeoff by pressing this button here or giving it throttle to take off. This button here is GPS return to home. Uh, you press it and it will activate uh, return to home and the quadcopter will return and land to you. The quadcopter will also return and land uh, if it loses signal from the transmitter, say the transmitter battery goes bad or you fly out of range, it will also come back. And on low battery also. Uh, this button here is your video camera button. Quick press takes a photo. Long press starts the video and you always got to remember to stop that video before removing power from the drone or you will lose uh, that video that you recorded. Um, this button here is your GPS on off switch. To the right in position B it is in GPS mode. If you switch it to the left to position A it is in altitude hold mode and the GPS is not holding the position of the quadcopter. So for new pilots make sure you got it in position B for the GPS to actually work. This button here is for turning headless mode on and off. To the left in position A headless mode is off. To the right in position B, headless mode is on, so I'm going to have it off for today's flight. This scroll wheel here will turn the, uh, will adjust the camera's lens up or down, you know, out of the gimbal uh, of the camera, so you can point down to the ground or straight up and view straight ahead, and I think that's pretty cool. And these L1 and L2 buttons are inoperative on this particular quadcopter, as are these antennas. These antennas on the bugs <laughs> transmitter are fake. I don't know why they put them on them folks to tell you the truth why do they even have them here <laughs> so <laughs> okay that's about it we were going to insert our battery into the drone start this up and go for a flight so hope you enjoy this flight so the first thing I'm gonna do is turn on the controller and I'm gonna plug in the battery and notice there's a lock switch on this battery to make sure it's in lock position and then we'll put the drone on the ground 
and it should have its gyros initiated. Now the first thing you need to do for flight, okay, now we've got bind to the quadcopter and the quadcopter's all set, except for one thing. It needs a compass calibration. And to do that, you rotate the drone. Notice its lights are blinking, alternating green. And you keep rotating the drone horizontally until those lights change to dark green. And then in dark green, you rotate the, the drone with the nose pointed down until the lights go solid. And we got solid green in the back, solid red in the front, and we have compass calibration. And right now, we have 10 satellites, so we are good to go with this controller alone. But I'm going to turn on the MGX Go app so we can use the app with this. And hold on, folks. Okay, this is the MGX Bugs Go app, available on Google Play and iTunes. Now, this drone has a lot of features, okay? Um, I am going to demonstrate today, circle me and follow me, you know, along with uh, normal flying of this drone. Uh, but uh, tomorrow, or in the next couple days, I'll take this out and do long-range flying out in the desert to demonstrate waypoint flying, along with long-range flying. Uh, the first thing I want to do, is we are ready to go. We got the compass calibrated. I want to start the camera, the video camera. So I am going to press the, the long press the camera button. And that should change. And now we know it's recording. We got the uh, red TF003. It's recording to the TF card. We have 19 satellites, 20 satellites. We got tons of satellites. So let's take to the air. Holding the, this button down. Actually, I think it's a quick press. <laughs> quick press starts the motors. And then pressing the takeoff button, making sure we are in GPS mode. And we'll check this stability. Always check stability of a drone, a GPS drone. What you're looking for is to see if it's doing any toilet bowl circling. And this is not. It is pretty steady. It seems to be pretty steady. Let me lower the gimbal a bit and get in the, in the range of the camera and say, how do you like my shirt today, folks? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, let's try the first thing is follow me. I'm going to move out. Normally, you've got to give a little bit of room here and go up a little bit higher. Actually, quite a bit higher because I want to go above the trees. Ooh, it's a little too high looking at my screen. And then I'm going to press uh, follow me. Or actually, let's do circle me first. Circle me. Pressing circle me. Start the orbit. Yes. And there is a circle me of the Bugs 5W. <laughs> I'll let it do one orbit, and then we'll go right into follow me after that. Now, I got the orbit radius set pretty big, <laughs> 20 meters. Um, you can set that in the settings to 5 meters. There, there, I'll show you that here shortly. Let's, let's stop this rotation real quick. And go into settings. And notice in settings, this, we have parameter settings where you set the... Um, Geofence. This has geofence parameters. I got 100 meters flight altitude, flight distance 300 meters, and max flight radius 20 meters. That's for circle me mode, and I want to reduce that. Let's take that down and uh, delete that and make that 5 meters. Done. And we are done with that. And um, also, let me hit the detection button here. Um, these are gyro status, barometer status, compass status. GPS status, everything's fine, so we're good there. And we're going to submit to the aircraft. So now we got a new radius of 5 meters. Let's activate Circle Me again. Start the orbit. And there's its 5 meter radius. It's real small now. So that's how you adjust the radius of this. It's in the settings. Let me get into the view of the camera one more time. And lowering the gimbal and there I am so hello up there so that circle me let's stop that and come let's try uh, follow me hitting actually let me go out a little further raising the gimbal up a bit and going over to this position here rotating because I'm looking at the sun. I don't want to look at the sun. I want you to be able to see this while I'm walking. And then activating, follow me. 
insufficient mobile phone GPS. Let's try that again. Follow me. So my GPS signal on my phone isn't strong enough right now. Um, I think it's because I got GPS turned off. So let's do a quick landing first. So let's try the land button. To save some battery power. It's because I turned off the GPS on my phone. I'm almost certain of that. To save battery power. So remember folks, if you're going to use follow me, you got to turn GPS on. Let me go do that and hold on folks. I'll be right back. That was an automatic landing. And stopping the video. Okay, I turned my GPS on. Sorry for that. And now I'm, let's start the camera again by pressing the camera button and holding it down. And the camera should be recording. Let's start the motors again with a quick press of the red button and then it's automatic takeoff. Quick check again to make sure we're still stable. Going up higher. And let me back it off a bit, just about there. And I'm centered in the picture, and let's activate follow me again, with, this time with GPS on. Start to follow me. <laughs> so, now let's try that follow me. So remember folks, if you're operating yours, <laughs> and it doesn't follow you, or it says something about GPS in insufficient, remember to turn your GPS back on. Okay, this way this follows me, it's not like the Hobson. Um, if I walk toward it, I think it's going to slide to the left. Let's see if it does. Let's go at an angle to it. Let's see if it does slide off to the left. So it's more similar to like a DJI, DJI uh, follow me mode, the way it's operating. Where it slides, it's like you're pushing it with a, a stick uh, on a hinge or pulling it with a thread. If you're going away from it, it's that type of follow me. Uh, Hubsons will just stay at a compass position away from you while you're doing follow me. This one will slide around, going off in different directions. That's my battery power. Ah, got a ton of battery. Let's go walk over here. We're cutting the grass today, that's why I'm not out in the green area. But we'll head over here just to try it out. Going up a bit higher to get above the trees. See, they're cutting grass today. This has been freshly seeded, by the way. Um, the soccer field. So that's cool. Let's make sure I'm high enough to go above these trees. That should be it. I'm looking at my screen and I am high enough above the trees. And we'll walk out into the green field. Now that really has a wide angle lens on it, folks. It's not as high as it looks here. <laughs> so it's only about, uh, I'd say, well, I got uh, 10 meters up. So, you know, 10 meters, it looks like it's 100 meters up or 50 meters, but it's not. Okay, that's enough of follow me. It's, it's working. Uh, what I'm going to do next is return to home. Let's press the return to home button. Oh no, that's orbit. Uh, return to home is what button again? I forgot. Oh, there. <laughs> Pressing it. Now it's going to climb a little and then head back. And let's see how accurate it's. Oh, it's going to land where I, where I did the last takeoff. So. Unfortunately, that was not on the pad. That, I landed that in the ground over here. So we're not going to be able to see the accuracy of that unless I move it back over to its pad. So let's do that. Boy, it comes down fast. Let's press that button again. Stop it. And let's land over at the pad. So we have a new reference point. Over the pad. It's close enough. Land.
Okay. We'll let the motor stop. And we're going to restart it again. Go back to follow me again. Okay, starting the motors again. Take off again. That'll be our new uh, return to home point. We'll go back to follow me again. I'm going to raise up the, the gimbal. Get back in the camera. Camera view. We're only going to be this high for this flight. I'm going to get a little closer too. And then reactivate follow me. Yes. So follow me is activated. Let's go over to the football field this time. Go up a little bit higher too. <laughs> this actually works very well, doesn't it? <laughs> of course it depends on the accuracy of your phone. I'm raising that's the highest that gimbal will go, by the way. Um, to see the horizon, you got to go higher. And walk over to the, to the field here. The battery power is still good. So this thing lasts a long time, doesn't it? <laughs> Up there. Okay. Let's say from right about here, let's... Press that return to home button one more time, and we'll see how accurate this return to home is. Return to home activated. It's going up. And I'll start walking back to its pad here and see. Let's see how if it lands on the pad. Boy, it goes back fast though. It does a rapid return to home. It's up in the air. <clears throat> Excuse me, folks. It's hovering there. Let's see how long it takes before it starts its descent. Okay, there it goes, its descent. It's a rapid descent. And then it stops at about, I don't know, about eight meters and slows down. And does the remaining. And it stops again at about three meters. And then for the last bit, comes down real slow and does it touch the pad it touches the pad so that's good enough that's not too bad so all in all this is actually a nice drone uh, with a good GPS system so let's take to the air one more t or let's stop that video and starting the video again and this time we'll take to the air starting the motors automatic takeoff and we're going to turn off the GPS. Let's see how uh, acrobatic it is or maneuverable it is. We are in altitude hold mode now. So manual flying altitude hold. Uh, getting a battery warning. We're going to fly it a bit. Sometimes the battery warnings on these are come a little bit early. But we'll take that as the battery warning. <laughs> Not super aggressive in altitude hold mode. But we're going to call it quits here, folks. Okay, that, again, this is the, only the first part review. Let me put it back in GPS, GPS on. Um, I'm going to do a second review again, as I mentioned. And I'm pretty sure I mentioned. I hope I mentioned. Okay, notice its lights blink red on low battery. Can you see that? But we're going to land it now. Uh, I'm going to do a second follow-on review of this out in the desert where we can uh, look at or waypoint mode and also evaluate the range of this drone. So uh, let me stop the video. Video stop. And let me remove power on the drone. I'll give you my initial thoughts here. Oh no, this, this is not a bad drone. It's actually pretty nice. <laughs> a good GPS system, very accurate. You see that? I, I was getting 20 satellites there. That's, <laughs> it gives you excellent accuracy there if you're getting 20 satellites. It's a good GPS system. Um, all in all, I kind of like it. So hope you enjoy the, this flight and hope you enjoy the follow-on for this is Quadcopter 101 signing out.